Okay, let's continue from where we left off. This is video three of a six part series. Let's get to it. And, you know, a lot of people are angry over the situation, but I think that uh, sometimes we're, we're getting angry about uh, the wrong things or we're given the wrong interpretation because unfortunately now we're not just given the news. We're given someone's uh, interpretation or someone else's narrative of what we should think about it and who we uh, should consider our to be our friends or who we should think that are on our side. Being angry might give you the courage you need to take a stand or to make a change. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Recognizing the warning signs. So here, this is important. And um, on a previous video, I think I already did the video where I talk about the cues to anger, right? Or the, the signs of anger. And this is something that's very important for us to begin to recognize. And it takes practice over time, right? To begin to understand, uh, uh, to recognize when you're getting angry, right? And there are certain things that occur in our body. And sometimes um, some of these warning signs happen in the very beginning. And if we can recognize them immediately, then we can kind of, you know, bring it to our attention that, hey, you know, maybe I, I want to be careful in this situation. If you're like some people, you may feel like your anger hits you in an instant. And a lot of us, you know, we talked about going from zero to 10 immediately as it relates to our anger. Perhaps you go from calm to furious in a heartbeat, but there are still likely warning signs when your anger is on the rise. Recognizing them early can help you take action to prevent your anger from reaching a boiling point. And so this is the thing, being able to recognize these signs and symptoms in the beginning, when we first um, are at a point where we're beginning to get angry, right? So if we recognize these early signs, then I can monitor uh, my anger and also monitor uh, what it what are the actual underlying reasons to my anger because sometimes it's other than what we think think about the physical warning signs of anger that you experience perhaps your heartbeat uh, beats faster or your face feels hot or maybe you begin to clench your fist you also might notice some cognitive changes perhaps your mind race or you begin seeing red and so it's talking about these these warning signs. And, and, and again, I forget if I actually did the vid video on cues to anger. If I did, you will know that um, I mentioned four Q categories of uh, associated with anger, um, uh, physical cues, behavioral cues, emotional cues and cognitive cues. Right. And these cues were signs that you were beginning to get angry. And here is talking about um, some physical cues such as your heartbeat uh, beating faster and then it meant or your face feeling hot. And then it mentioned a physical cue, which is, uh, you know, you um, excuse me, a, a behavioral cue, which is like you start to clench your fist. Right. Or you pace back and forth. Those are uh, behavioral cues. Those are behaviors that we may display when we begin to get angry. And then um, it also uh, mentioned uh, the cognitive. Right. The way that you're thinking and 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 a lot of times the thinking or the cognitive cues are the most important right they're definitely the uh can be the most detrimental as it relates to us acting out on anger so it's important that we begin to recognize these things early step away so here is talking about step away and this is is talking about um a timeout Right. In, in, in many of the uh, videos that I'll do whenever it talks about strategies related to uh, uh, managing our anger, I usually will mention timeouts or taking a timeout or having an official timeout plan. And this is what it's what it's talking about here when it's talking about step away. Right. Take a timeout from the situation. Now, it's helpful if you have an official plan to take a timeout from whatever it is that you're going through with the person. It's helpful to uh, with your family, let's say 
to uh, tell the family ahead of time, like, hey, you know, um, let's have an agreement that if we begin to get angry, exceptionally angry about a conversation or a situation that we're having, that we can take a time out from the situation and come back and, com and finish resolving the issue when we're in a, a state of calm, right? Because generally, if we're in a heightened state of anger, we're going to say and do things that is likely going to make the situation worse. And the thing about saying things, you know, having things come out of your mouth, um, you can't take them back, right? You can apologize and hope that the person forgives you or what have you, but you can't unsay them. And once you say certain things and, and a person begins to feel a certain way about it, you know, they're always uh, going to have that memory. So it's more helpful if I'm able to um, deal with my situation in such a way that it never actually comes out of my mouth. And the best way to do that is to resolve situations when I'm in a calm state. Walking away from a triggering situation can be an excellent way to take control over your anger. A timeout can be key to helping you calm your brain and body. And, and so that's the thing. We give our ourselves an opportunity to calm down and it mentioned calming your brain and your body and it is it is exactly that because if if your anger is anything like mine and i have and i had and have <laughs> anger management issues um it, it it's not just your thought process right you you feel something in your body there's a certain amount of tension um in your body when you become angry especially when you're in an extreme state of anger Right. And even as you begin to calm down, you can also you'll, you'll feel your your mind <clears throat> begin to calm down. But also you can feel the relief in your body. Right. Um, as you begin to calm down. And if you're in a heightened state of anger for an extended period of time, you will really know that it's more than just your your mind uh, that was going through something, because if you're, let's say, hours right in this state. Um, you know, maybe even the next day you will feel your your body uh, feel a certain amount of exhaustion um, from being in that in that sustained state of anger for so long. If there's somebody that you can routinely get into heated disputes with, like a friend or family member, talk to them about the importance of taking a time out and resuming when you're both feeling calm. So. Again, it could be a friend, a family member. Um, this is uh, a lot of times a good situation in relationships, especially if there are um, uh, domestic uh, violence involved in a relationship, domestic disputes where you get uh, very uh, toxic arguments and are physical uh, confrontations, right? It, it would be helpful to plan things out, assuming that you still want to have uh, some any kind of interaction and or relationship with that person or people um, you want to have this in place ahead of time so that when you feel the situation getting out of control you can take a break and come back when uh, you feel better about the situation when you need to step away explain that you aren't trying to dodge difficult subjects but that you're working on managing your anger and so again as you uh, make this plan or, or time out uh, plan, you know, you're you're letting the person know that, you know, you're not discounting what they're saying. You're not trying to get away from the situation. You're not trying to not address the situation. Um, but, you know, because you have anger issues, it's highly likely that if you continue at that moment, uh, the situation could potentially turn uh, negative, right? 